sign for peace. July 16, 1945, the desert of New Mexico. From a single gram of matter, man releases the explosive energy of 20,000 tons of TNT. Dawn of the atomic age. Eight sixteen a.m., August 6, 1945, Hiroshima, Japan. A city dies as an age is born. One bomb from one plane, and life becomes death. One bomb from one plane, and Hiroshima is wasteland. One bomb from one plane, and 78,000 human beings perish. Three days later, one more bomb on Nagasaki, and 24,000 more die. Two bombs, and World War II is over. ships sail into Tokyo Bay, the goal toward which they set their course 44 months earlier, after the attack on Pearl Harbor. <laughs> to the 163 amphibious landings that were made in the Pacific, a final token one is added. The 2nd Battalion, 4th Marines, originally wiped out at Bataan and Corregidor, reconstituted, goes ashore to test whether the Japanese will resist on their own soil, whether peace has really come. There is no resistance. The Empire of Japan surrenders fully, completely. The Allies are spared one million casualties. prisoners of war, the first fruits of victory, the immediate prize of peace. 23,000 Allied soldiers, sailors, Marines are freed from camps throughout Japan. Some have been captive since the fall of Manila and Singapore in 1942. Many who survive are near the limits of mental and physical endurance. <laughs> Return to hope, return to life. For the dead, to all who died in strange lands, under foreign skies, warrior rest, thy task is done. hospital ships receive the sick, the war, the weary. Benevolence for those who have waited, those who have suffered. Ships of the United States Navy converge. The Allied Armada gathers. Britain's Royal Navy ends the long, long odyssey from Dunkirk on the English Channel to victory in the Bay of Tokyo. <laughs> Japanese pilots guide the Allied ships into harbor, past the shattered symbols of aggression, past the junk and debris that was once the magnificent Imperial Japanese Navy. For the island empire, 
The dream of conquest died with the death of the Imperial fleet. From the battleship Missouri, the word was flashed. Cease fire, cease fire. The war is over. From the Missouri went Admiral Halsey's message to the fleet. Well done. Now, on September 2nd, 1945, the final act of World War II is staged on her decks. The formal surrender of the Japanese Empire to the Allied powers. Union in the United States, General of the Army MacArthur directs the Japanese to sign the instrument of surrender. <music> Foreign Minister Shigemitsu signs for Emperor Hirohito and the government of Japan. General Umezu for the Imperial General Staff. From a Manchurian prison camp, General Wainwright, captured on Corregidor, and General Percival, captured at Singapore, have come to take a place of honor with General MacArthur, who signs for the Allied powers. armed forces of the United States. and only one, is allowed by the Allies in Japan's unconditional surrender. Emperor Hirohito remains, and to his subjects he proclaims a new day, a future day wherein men, not armies, men, not navies, men, not air forces, men, not despots, will determine their own destiny, set their own course. occupation, but the occupation will go. In Europe, throughout the world, the sound of guns has ceased, but the sound of mourning continues and will continue. Innocent victims of war do not forget, and let none forget. The brand of tyranny and oppression will forever scar the conscience of mankind.
liberate, President Roosevelt said of the Allied armies. At Buchenwald and Dachau, at Bells and at Auschwitz, the locks were broken, the barriers fell. In the concentration camps, in the slave labor depots, men inflicted their greatest indignity on man. But now he is free. in its blackest depth, the human cost that no statistics can even suggest, no words describe. in spirit, the words victory and peace have lost their meaning. But for all the rest, the words mean life and liberty and home. in Europe, earmarked for further combat in the Pacific, the bomb that burst over Hiroshima has one single surpassing meaning. Home. Home again. Pacific, where war began for the United States and ceased for the world. The voyage home is called the magic carpet run. And nothing out of the Arabian Nights is more magical for these battle-weary sailors than the prospect ahead. They're going home. that drag, the interminable days. But now the undercurrent of chill and foreboding, of hostile shores and coming combat is gone. Now the ships that were built to kill and destroy become floating playgrounds, where the dirty job of war is over, and cares are cast aside. <laughs>
was sung long ago by Walt Whitman. Flaunt out, O sea, your separate flag of nations. Flaunt out visible as ever the various ship signals. But reserve especially for yourself and for the soul of man one flag above all the rest. A spiritual woven signal for all nations. Emblem of man elate above death. Token of all brave captains and all intrepid sailors and mates. And all that went down doing their duty. Reminiscent of them, twined from all intrepid captains, young or old, a pennant universal, subtly waving all time, for all brave sailors, all seas, all ships. of both coasts, along the west coast, along the east coast, the ships that sailed away to war and death bring back their millions to peace and life. To these men, free men owe their victory on land, their victory in the air, their victory at sea.
come, each in search of his own design for peace, his own pattern for the future. But first, in all the Allied lands, in all the Allied work, one last parade. The parade of all who marched out together to meet the challenge of tyranny, and who, together, conquered. defiance, in victory magnanimity, in peace, goodwill. Mm -hmm. 